What's going on guys? Welcome back, Strong Side episode number five. Today I'm gonna to be covering a shoulder workout which is gonna smash the front, side, and rear delts. It's gonna be a complete shoulder workout. Loads of supersets, there's gonna be giant sets in there as well. So stay with me, I'll see you on the commentary. Welcome to the commentary on this shoulder workout. First thing you wanna do is warm up the rotator cuff which is four little muscles which keep the ball of your shoulder in place. It's really important to exercise this with just an extremely light weight. You can see I've, I don't even have any weight on the stack and that's just really gonna pump the blood into the shoulder area just so it's nice and secure and that'll mitigate the amount of shoulder impingement that you can get from performing shoulder exercises. So I always do this at the start of my shoulder routines and also my chest days as well. First exercise was a seated Smith machine press. I really like using the Smith machine. I don't use it every time, probably every other time that I do shoulders. I do like to do standing barbell press as well. But with the Smith machine, it allows me to keep constant tension throughout the entire range of motion. And I just get much more of a burn in my shoulders than if I am using just like a regular barbell. So gradually increase the weight on each set. Uh, by 5 or 10 kilograms and just until I was performing maybe 6 to 8 reps and then drop setting at the end as always. Try and keep your elbows tucked under slightly and you'll see before I actually perform the movement I kind of, I do a short rep without the bar even on my hands because you want to ensure that your forearms are perpendicular to the floor meaning they're pointing straight upwards so that when you come down then your arms are forming a 90 degree angle. Also make sure to keep your wrists forward as well and don't let the barbell collapse back onto your wrists. Next we moved on to a behind the neck press on the Smith machine. This engages more of the rear delt but it's also you're at a slight mechanical disadvantage by doing a behind the neck press so you can't go as heavy on this and if you are doing this for the first time I would definitely suggest going very light just so you can gauge your strength and so that you don't risk injuring your shoulder while doing this movement. Also by doing it on the Smith machine it is safer because in this clip I think I hit failure and I can't actually push the bar up so I can just lock it back onto the Smith machine so it is a little bit of a safer movement as well. Next we moved on to a, I call these head clears, which are, as you can see, just pressing the bar up from the anterior and posterior position and just enough to clear my head and keeping that tension on the shoulders the entire time. There's no rest, there's no locking out of the elbows, so this is a real burn for the shoulders and I really like this movement because it just activates all of the heads of the shoulder, so that's the, the front side and middle or the anterior, medial and posterior deltoid. And the pump I get from this is ridiculous, so I definitely suggest trying this one. I also do this one at the end of the workout. Uh, just because it gives my shoulders such a burn and this is also why it's really important to warm up the rotator cuffs because this is kind of hitting them by you know moving the shoulders at different angles so again I stress warming up your shoulders properly before you do this exercise. So we did three sets of this exercise. I like to start off my shoulder workouts with a lot of pressing movements just because the compound nature of the exercises allows me to use a little bit more of the secondary muscles like my triceps which just helps to push a little bit more weight and I just finished off the set with a few partial reps. The next exercise was seated dumbbell press. It's really important to do dumbbell movements for shoulders as well and any unilateral movements which means that each side is working independently because if you are using the Smith machines all the time or barbell movements then if you do have one dominant side like for me it's definitely my left side is outgrowing my right side so it's important to put unilateral movements into your workouts because if each muscle is forced to work at its own rate then there's no assistance from the other side to help you shift the weight so I think from now on I'm going to move into unilateral movements to start so my workouts for shoulders in the future will probably be starting with dumbbell press instead of the Smith machine because like I mentioned my left shoulder is outgrowing my right shoulder very quickly so it's not deliberate that I put the camera on this side uh, just because this is my bigger shoulder but yeah 
So I did three sets of this exercise with a drop set at the end. I tend to do drop sets um, maybe two or three times in my normal workouts, but for shoulders I do it pretty much at the end of every exercise just because I get a really, really good burn. Shoulders is one of these days where I prefer doing a lot more volume. So dropping the weight and really pumping out some reps allows me to hit that level of volume. Next we have a, I don't even know what this exercise is called to be honest, I kind of modified like a clean and jerk and what I do is rest the barbell on the, the lowest rack setting, so the, the little safety catches and it's, it's like a rack pull into a shoulder press but when you flip the weight up that kind of engages some of the traps in the front delts to flip the weight up and then obviously you're using your shoulders and triceps to press up for the rest of the movement and I don't know what it is, it must be the pre-exhaustion from the, the flick up to the top but this is a very difficult movement and can't be performed with that much weight so I actually made one of my buddies try this exercise He's a very strong guy and he's from like a powerlifting background so he can usually shoulder press a very heavy weight but when I made him try this exercise he was astounded at how few reps he could do with only uh, a 10 kilogram plate on each side and the barbell itself just because the sheer volume and Olympic style movement whilst using a bodybuilding tempo so lifting the weight up slower not using that much momentum to bring up the weight and then controlling it on the way back down just really really burns. Dude, you're fucking bodybuilders in my way. You're a flexor? You're gonna get splashed? You're gonna get wet. <laughs> Hurt so bad. <laughs> so I carried on with this exercise. This was feeling really good. I kept the weight consistent throughout. I didn't need to go much heavier because my shoulders were already pretty tired from all the pressing movements. So if you are going to try this movement, you can use a little bit of leg drive when you are approaching failure on maybe like the last one or two reps, or if you hit failure just by sticking to the form and then using that leg drive to give you an extra two or three reps then that's perfect that's what I'd really encourage you to do next exercise we moved on to face pulls and this is an exercise that took me a while to get right so I'm gonna go really in depth with the explanation on how to perform this properly to really engage your rear delts so the first thing when you grab the rope you're gonna as you can see from here I'm just pulling the rope to, and spreading the rope across like my forehead or just a little bit higher but when you grab the rope the first thing that you want to do is when you grab it you want to pull both sides of the rope apart as if you're trying to almost if you're trying to make the rope completely straight that's the movement that you want to emulate so you want to pull both sides of the rope as far apart as possible and then as soon as you've got that that's really going to engage your rear delts and the tension will be there throughout the movement once you've spread the rope as far outwards as possible, then you're gonna bring the rope to your forehead, contracting the rear delts. You should feel it like right at the very top of your shoulder, almost from your back. Try not to sway throughout the movement unless you are approaching failure. So you can see when I'm doing the exercise, like the last few reps I will sway with my body just to help the momentum and pushing out a few more reps. But when I am starting my set, I'm keeping my body very still and controlling the weight throughout the movement. So just keep keep the ropes pulled apart, pull it very slowly towards your forehead, use a light weight until you can really feel the rear delts burning and this, is, this exercise is definitely responsible for most of my rear delt gains whilst I've been training. Afterwards we moved on to a rear delt fly, another great isolation movement for the rear delts. The reason I started with face pulls is because when you see people train in rear delts, a lot of the times they just pick up these extremely light dumbbells and start doing flies on a bench face down. But 
if you're going to attack your front delts and side delts with pressing movements, then I don't understand why you wouldn't do a compound movement for the rear delts as well. The importance of training your rear delts is that it really fills out your shoulder from the side. So you can often tell who's a novice in the gym because they'll have really well developed front delts from bench pressing and doing shoulder press, but they often neglect the rear delts. Really it's in the back movements as well, so it's important that you are training those as well. And like I said, it just really fills out your shoulder so it's nice and round and capped off from the side. So last exercise is going to be a four part giant set. A giant set is when you do one exercise into another, into another, into another with no rest in between. So this is going to be a four set, four different exercises, all in one set, barely any rest in between. And then I'm going to take one or two minutes rest and then do it again. So. I'm going to start off with lateral raises, moving into barbell head clears like I did on the Smith machine. Then I'm going to go into plate steering wheels and then into plate with right rows. This is how you do it. So the first exercise was just a lateral raise. As you can see, the only part moving in my body is from the shoulder joint upwards. I'm not swaying my entire body to try and shift the weight. If you are doing this, then lower the weight. I'm only using eight kilogram dumbbells here, which is extremely light, but that's the weight that allows me to execute perfect form. So as soon as you finish this exercise, jump in straight into head clears like I did on the Smith machines before. Like I mentioned, this is a great movement which just activates the front, side and rear delts all in one movement and then just keeping that tension constantly throughout. Next we went on to plate steering wheels and of all the exercises this one burns the most. I don't know what it is, it must be the, the stabilisation at the top of the movement but this just sets the shoulders on fire. So if you've never tried this exercise, absolutely recommend it. It's really really good, gives you a crazy burn and it's a nice finishing movement. As soon as you hit failure on this, grab the plate and then just keep knocking out some more reps. Get some upright rows, always keeping your elbows above your wrists when you're doing upright rows, that's the most important thing. And this engages your traps, your rear delts, shoulders, everything. Set one. This one's the worst. Get out of my way, I'm driving the bus. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of today's shoulder workout. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for the support, and now it's time to relax and watch 300. This is Sparta! Wreck. Catch you later! <laughs>